Hello everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in with me. It's May the 22nd, 2024, and just giving an update. Yesterday was hopefully what would be my last chemo. It would have been my eighth, or was my eighth chemo. Um, it should have been my ninth, but because we missed it that first week. Um, so I am hoping that eight was enough of that. Uh, so things are moving along quite well. Uh, my tumor is definitely shrinking. I've got my appointment with the surgeon consult next week on Wednesday the 29th. So I'll know if she's on board um, or if I have to go a little longer or what she suggests. And, and then I can decide uh, myself if I want to choose her or shop around or whatever. We'll just see what it looks like on the PET scan. I'm getting that done tomorrow. That's Thursday. So um, I'm going to get a PET scan and then hopefully we'll have the results on Friday. I'm going to go try to pick up my discs then. So um, if they can't get me there right up, I'm certainly going to look it up because I'm one of those patients. <laughs> I looked at the first one really early on too and it, I, I'm not you know, frightened by that kind of stuff. It's just more information. I have a really good feeling that it will have gone well. Um, I've been seemingly handling this really well. I think we're directing the, the chemo and the Herceptin and Progetta at the active cancer sites fairly um, on point because I'm not really suffering a lot of side effects. My GI tract does seem to be a little more touchy, but um, that's to be expected. So I'm just kind of sticking with more broth and tea right now. I'm trying to cut back a little bit um, because I was eating more sweet potatoes and rice and carbs, um, but no bread or anything. So I'm trying to slim it out a little bit more I'm now, hoping that I can um, coast without chemo and just do the Herceptin and Progetta. So that's the goal. Um, today, I was going to mention that uh, one of the first things I do every morning is I get up and I take, um, currently I'm taking five of these things. Normally, you only have to take like three. You try to do it twice a day. I tend to do it once a day unless I'm working and then I can time it better at the office. But I'm doing systemic enzymes, um, specifically with serapeptase. Serapeptase is, um, or serapeptidase, uh, no, ser it's serapeptase. Um, so it comes from a silkworm and silkworms make silk and they have to be able to break that silk down. It's one of the, the fibers down. It's one of the um, strongest, you know, anti-fibrogen um, type uh, enzymes out there, so or elements out there. So um, <clears throat> it's pretty cool to take internally. You can help clear out inflammation. Um, it does end up seeking out old viruses and other, you know, debris and particles that need to move out of the body. So it's it's really great at scavenging for stuff like that. But I'm mostly taking it for inflammation and breaking down the fibrin and helping my body cope with some of this necrotic debris from the die off of the cancer cells. Um, so that's a really big deal, I think. Not everybody knows about serapeptase, and it's not a cheap supplement, um, but uh, I would recommend finding one that has a few different other enzymes in them because it helps to allow serapeptase to do its job more efficiently than having to try to do all of the jobs. Um, and some of this stuff you have to get through a practitioner because if, to get a high enough dose and only have to take five tiny little pills, which are the easiest ones I take, um, is pretty great because if you get the, like the, I guess the residential special, <laughs> I don't know what they would call that, like things you can just pick up on Amazon or something, you're gonna only get the really kind of lower dose serapeptase and then they recommend taking like 15 of these pills, which, and they're big uh, and they smell terrible. So they don't have the enteric coating is what I've noticed. Um, so that means they break in the stomach a lot sooner, which means you're not getting, um, you know, the full benefit, benefit of those enzymes getting past the stomach acid and into the duodenum and small intestine and, and actually doing some work systemically when it gets into the circulatory system. So you want those to kind of not break too soon. Um, so you need that enteric uh, coating. I think that's a big deal for some of those enzymes. They're, you know, might as well spend a little bit more and get the good stuff. So I really like World Nutrition. There's like maybe one or two other companies out there. Um, but anyway, not an advertisement. I don't get any money for that, but I'm taking them myself. I think they're wonderful. I'm also taking a natto kinase um, for a uh, cardiac inflammatory um, support, um, just to make sure that I'm getting a little bit more focused attention on the inflammation that might be happening around the heart um, because of all of the Herceptin I'm doing that's, you know, for the HER2 blockers because your heart will also take a little impact from that. Um, so, but the echo looked good. I don't know if I updated anybody on that. It kind of took a while for me to even find the report, but it's in, it's fine. It almost looked like I improved um, in some weird way. So I, I'm not sure if this is a time dependent thing during the day or like, 
if I've done certain movements that are more helpful that day, I'm not sure how easily it is impacted as a test. So whatever, not damaged yet. So we're looking good. Um, I will say after yesterday, after the last chemo, I was feeling kind of flighty in the chest. So I was imagining I was probably having some palpitations, but it wasn't bad. I wasn't lightheaded. Um, I was very tired and white, so I did not do a video. Um, I, I did though come home with enough time. The sun was setting in our little cove, so there's no direct sun. So I got to um, plant. So I planted some things around the yard, which felt just lovely. Um, I didn't overdo it, I promise. Sarah was all on me. Um, but it was nice to just spend some time outside. We picked cherries off our cherry tree. We have a huge amount of cherries. This is the first year we ever had cherries. Last year, I thought that tree died in the frost. It had nothing all year. And then at the very end of the season, like in November, I feel like I looked up there and there were two leaves at one of the distal branches. And I was like, that thing's still alive. And it came back this year with a full flush. So the birds and squirrels and my chickens are all very happy for the cherries. Uh, and so am I. I actually got some this year. So I am excited. Um, otherwise, uh, today I'm also sipping on because my heart was a little funky yesterday. I'm sipping on some Hawthorne tea. I do this, I actually made a little blend. So Hawthorne is really good for heart support. And um, so I'm doing a little mix. I got some Hawthorne leaves and I do berries. The berries are in there and the leaves are in there. I do, I don't really measure this stuff. I'm talking like, I don't know, I have a little spoon and I just kind of put it into a little wire basket on top of my cup, pour hot water over it. It's very simple. I added uh, a little burdock root to help my body kind of clear. Um, it's a really good mover and shaker of fluids. So I didn't do too much. If you do a lot, you have to pee all day. Uh, I will say that burdock root tastes amazing. Um, and I'm pretty sure that was the herb that we used <clears throat> in Nepal when she was nauseated. So I have to look that one back up, but he definitely gave her like a root and pretty sure it was burdock and she just had to chew on it. Um, these are really dehydrated. So tea is best. I also added some dandelion leaf. Um, People don't understand how good dandelion can be. Uh, it is really wonderful for your liver. So I'm trying to support the liver a bit as well. And I've, I've added just a smidge of dandelion root. Um, sometimes when I'm out in the yard, if I know I'm in an area that nobody has sprayed in the past, and I certainly am not going to spray, um, I'll, you know, if I find some dandelions, first off, I let them grow because they're wonderful for your soil. They pull up a lot of minerals. They're really good for that. Um, so I just, I just eat them. I just nibble them. I try to get the leaves of them early in the spring. They're not too bitter. Um, otherwise I've been buying, I was cheating and I buy them at the market. You can, and actually a lot of grocery stores will carry them now, just dandelion leaves. Um, so if earlier in the season, they're not too bitter. Later in the season, they get rougher and bitter, but very, very good for the detoxing of the liver. And the liver is, you know, the main organ right now in the spring, you want to really kind of put energy toward and, and support as much as you can so that you can cruise into a nice, you know, disease, illness-free summer. Um, and just because I think it tastes amazing and I think it balances all my teas, I did a bit of nettle. So stinging nettle is wonderful, full of minerals. Um, it's just really a rich, um, super nutrient-dense nutrient leaf. So that's my tea for the morning. And otherwise, uh, I did have my 23rd mistletoe injection mistletoe visit, um, truly. So th 23rd visit down there, which is a lot in a short uh, few months. So that was really great. The day went wonderful. I had a friend drive me down and back. Um, we had a blast, um, just great conversation. I feel just really grateful for all the people in my life, um, including everyone out here that's listening to my videos. Um, I really, I have definitely never known how many people can kind of come out and help support. So that has been eye-opening. I hope that is what changes, you know, my look on the world. I thought I had an optimistic look, but you know, I guess when you really look at some of the systems I've been around in my life, like the medical system, if you look too close, it's a pretty sad state of affairs. But if your, you know, your perspective changes on it dramatically, uh, you can see some really wonderful things. Um, I had, you know, I had a great time at, at the clinic, getting hugs from people, and then even at the hospital at Messino, uh, the nurses always seem to like, you know say hello and give me eye contact and um, that's pretty cool. So, you know, I think, I think everybody's just trying to do their best out there. So I hope you do too. And I think that'll do it for my video today. Thanks for tuning in.